brothers, it's good to uh, speak to you tonight. Good afternoon. In the last weeks, there has been a huge increase in people who want to learn about socialism and join the PSL. Do you remember 15 months ago when Trump gave his State of the Union address and warned there will never be socialism in the United States? Remember? Why was he so insistent that socialism will never exist here? It's because he and his fellow capitalists are quite aware of the dissatisfaction in the population. It's palpable and growing. Socialism is, in fact, more popular than ever. Now, Bernie Sanders certainly contributed to the growing support for socialism, but it was more than his campaigns, as dynamic as they were. It's capitalism itself that is responsible for people's interest in socialism. Even before the pandemic, people, by their own experiences, were seeing more and more that capitalism isn't working for them. And for 10 years, this growing inequality has accelerated since the last recession, creating a sea change in consciousness of the people. If a Federal Reserve study pointed out two years ago that 40% of the people in the United States don't even have $400 in the bank for an emergency, what has this crisis done to them and millions more? Jobs have disappeared. Wages are being slashed for all workers in every industry. And if anything, the failure of the government to order the mass production of tests, PPE, the pittance of a rescue check, makes it even clear to people that the system doesn't work for any of us. As of last Friday, 22, 22 million people have applied anew for unemployment claims, actually for tomorrow. And many organizations have formed in recent years, progressive groups that are involved in many social causes, and we work with many of them in a united way. But the Party for Socialism and Liberation is distinct. We're a socialist party, which is fighting for a society where there are no homeless, where everyone has housing and a job or an income if they can't work, where all discrimination is ended. And we believe in the actuality of a revolution. Not only do we see its necessity, we see that it's possible here in the United States, led by the working class in all its breadth and depth. Four year, uh, 16 years ago, in 2004, we were just a handful of people who decided that the time was right, despite the endless wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, the time was right to build a new socialist party in the U.S. What do we mean by actuality of revolution? Revolution and socialism may seem impossible in the U.S., in the most repressive and powerful capitalist state. But actually, we see the U.S. as perfectly suited for socialism and the U.S. working class that will carry out that revolution. Actuality, why? All the productive capacity and resources make it more than possible to organize a new system and a humane society that meets people's needs in every way. The PSL has produced one of our favorite posters. We say workers make the world run, workers should run the world. I want you to look at everything you have in your home, sisters and brothers, your clothes, your food, everything, the transport that you take, bicycle, car, public transportation, everything in this modern era in the world is created by the organized and collective social production of the workers everything. My shirt says made in Vietnam, but the cotton was produced here in the United States, probably sewn in Vietnam, but shipped across the Pacific and back, transported by rail, driven by truck to stores, stocked and sold by store workers. A car, the steel, glass, rubber, plastic, electronics, and must be made by hundreds of thousands of workers in social production and across the borders. Literally thousands of hands produce the day-to-day -day things that we use. All the workers, again, in social production. The problem is virtually everything that produces those goods and services, what we call the means of production, are privately owned. Social production, but private ownership. And this contradiction of capitalism, for example, means that when General Motors decided it would stop marketing, its economic model, the crews in Lordstown, Ohio, the largest factory in the world, and replace it with SUVs and luxury cars to maximize its profits, it shut down 
this plant and left thousands of workers without a job. The workers had no say. And the only thing that mitigated their situation was the union. But under capitalism, even with the union, the workers, I mean, the owners have the right to do whatever they want with that factory. The executives and major shareholders, the tiny handful of owners, are the real dictatorship. It's a capitalist dictatorship. Jeff Bezos owns Whole Foods. Think of how many millions of workers produce all those products, but he owns Whole Foods. Now, if Bezos and his executives didn't show up for work, nothing would happen. But if the workers don't show up, everything stops. If one product in a car is not produced, nothing moves at all down the line. So what is the solution to the crisis of capitalism? Revolution. Get rid of the capitalists as the owning class. Take everything they've stolen away from us, and we would run the economy in a sustainable way with common ownership of all the means of production to run society sustainably. We've been fed every day, sisters and brothers in the media, that the, our heroes have to be the millionaires and billionaires, and that we must be grateful for the philanthropy of a few million. Some computers to kids, or throw a few million dollars for a stadium to be renamed, or a hospital so they can blaze their name on it, like Zuckerberg General Hospital in San Francisco. Now, philanthropy has its price, and we're paying for it. Our own history, the history of the dispossessed, the working class, our history is proof that all social progress, progress came from struggle. Where did May Day, that great international workers' holiday, start? But in Chicago, the fight of the enslaved African people in constant rebellion and resistance while building the wealth of the capitalists. Native people who fought time again against the greatest odds, but the resistance continues. Sometimes it seems like things will never change. Injustice has been growing. People become disillusioned and we struggle for reforms only to see them wiped out. The U.S. ruling class has perpetuated the myth that the United States is the greatest country, the perfect democracy where freedom reigns. Suddenly now, that myth is being wiped out in the blink of an eye, and all the bloody crimes of capitalism exposed for what they are. We have the highest number now of COVID deaths, 32,000 today, caused by the government's criminal neglect workers in the most essential of jobs, from medical to farm workers, to food processing, grocery store and delivery, left completely on their own with no PPE, exposed needlessly and dying because of it. Think of the families and the survivors who are affected. In South Dakota, where there were very, very few cases until recently, the Smithfield pork plant an international conglomerate with tens of thousands of workers. And in South Dakota, in the eastern part of the country, uh, where the governor still refuses to order an emergency uh, state, at that one plant, more than 600 workers now and 150 of the family members are positive with the virus. That's more than two thirds of all the state's cases, making it the number one hotspot in the country today. Prisoners are dying in jails. Seniors dying from a virus that has swept through the homes like a wildfire. And black people dying in record numbers. Wall Street, the banks, the war manufacturers, the real estate giants, they're getting trillions in this rescue while people have nothing to live on. And now there's a crisis of housing and the risk that millions could face eviction after this crisis is over. Well, we say this, if not one renter paid the rent, or homeowner pay their mortgage, every building would be standing. The only thing that would collapse would be the real estate industry. Now, would that be so bad? Because everybody would stay housed. And of the 17 million empty homes, new homes that are vacant, everybody who's homeless or in overcrowded conditions or poor housing could have a home for free without having to pay a penny to the banks or real estate giants. That's socialism. After all, 
Who built all those homes? The workers. Who provides health care? The insurance companies or the doctors and nurses? Well, it's obvious. And who puts food on our tables? Monsanto and ADM? Or the farm workers, food processors, and grocery workers? Every adult in the U.S. could receive and should receive $3,000 a month to survive the crisis, citizen or non-citizen. We demand massive testing and not a penny more for the banks and war manufacturers. This is all possible today, sisters and brothers, because the resources are there. Trump and his cohorts, cohorts say socialism will never happen in the United States, but we believe this is where it will happen. After the fall of apartheid, a South African said, revolution seems impossible until it happens, and then it seems inevitable. There's one thing that's essential to the victory of revolution, and that is a revolutionary party. And we invite you, sisters and brothers, to join us in becoming part of that party and fighting on. Thank you.